folks, while you're uh, enjoying your salads, uh, I just want to um, take a few moments and welcome everybody to the the special event today, uh, and in introduce our uh, head table and invited guest. Um, to my left uh, is uh, Shawn head coach Jeff Roy. Yeah. Uh, Shawn Athletic Director John Nixie. And the Shawn guest speaker today, Mike Monero. And to my right, uh, the uh, Derby head coach, George French. And the Derby guest speaker, Jamal Baskin. Um, I'd also like to recognize the superintendent of schools uh, from Shelton, our Freeman Burr. Yeah. Um, in Derby, Dr. Matthew Conway. Uh, Shelton headmaster, Dr. Beth Smith. And the Derby principal, Greg Gillard. And the uh, City of Derby Mayor, Anita Gatto. <laughs> and of course, show Mayor Mark Levetti will come in soon. Um, also missing today is a very important part of this process. Um, it's uh, Tony Branca from uh, the city of Shell and uh, had a prior engagement. He uh, he was responsible for constructing the trophy that you see right in front of me. Uh, this is the second trophy he has designed and constructed. Um, the last trophy, um, what happens with this trophy, for those of you who may not know, is after 10 wins, it gets to stay at that school. So, um, <clears throat> The current trophy uh, is on a four game winning streak with Shelton. Um, the last trophy was uh, retired in 2009. Um, and uh, I'd like to you know, give the thanks to Tony Branca for his wonderful design. And this is the second trophy that he has designed. Uh, and I, I'd just like to also, uh, uh, Superintendent of Schools, Shelton Freeman Burke. One of the oldest traditions of the Derby Shelton Rotary Club and the two communities it serves is the annual Thanksgiving Day football game. This event dates back to the late 1930s and has been a holiday fixture for decades. At one time, the local Kiwanis Club used to take uh, the players to the Yankee Stadium uh, and a state dinner to watch a uh, professional football game. Over time, well, you're still receiving a state dinner, but I'm sorry we can't bring you to Yankee Stadium. Uh, over time, the event evolved into what it is today, with the Rotary Club being its sole sponsor for many, many years. Um, I can remember going to RAP to enjoy a steak luncheon on the Tuesday before the game when I was a senior at Derby High School. And now I have the honor over the last three years of being the master of ceremonies for this truly wonderful and inspiring event. This year is the 103rd game between the two squads, dating from 1905 to 2014, with the annual game starting on Thanksgiving in around 1922. They actually did play a game 100 years ago in 1914. 1914 was an interesting year. That was the first, that was the year Yale Bowl was um, constructed and opened. Um, but in 1914, unlike what's gonna happen in the next couple days, the weather was in the mid-60s. It was one of the warmest days in the history of November. And the winning team that day was Derby by a score of 19 to zero. Unfortunately, while I was doing my research on the 1914 game, I couldn't find anybody alive or dead to talk about the game. And I know, I know it's hard to believe with all my contacts at the cemetery. <laughs> the 
I'm always excited to be here today. Matter of fact, I couldn't sleep uh, from late in the evening. Um, when I joined Rotary as a young professional, the first thing I asked after yeah, getting to know everybody was when was the football luncheon and do we still do it? Uh, tr the tradition of this game has carried well into the past in many families throughout the valley. There are families that can say their father and grandfather and great grandfather, uncles and great uncles and cousins, and have played in this game in generations past. And as my family, I am sure there are people that went to one high school and now raised their family in the other town. And that makes for a lot of fun and in innocent bantering during the Thanksgiving Day feast about different plays throughout the game that made a difference. And when it was like when we did it. So um, enjoy your meal and uh, we'll continue the program during dessert. Thank you. I guess we're going first on the guest speaker. Uh, my guest speaker is a 1995 graduate of Derby High School. He was the captain of the 1994 football team. Uh, he was a Silver Turkey winner in 1993. He currently is a Naugatuck police officer, and he, at one point over the last five, six years, was ranked the number two ranked uh, bodybuilder in the heavyweight division in the world and all natural. Uh, he helped train our boys over the last couple of years. Uh, he did a fantastic job with them in the summers. I, they really uh, they really loved when he when practice ended and he walked away because they were they were pretty shocked. But uh, our uh, guest speaker is Jamal Baskins. officer, so I don't really need a mic. <laughs> I, I hate mics. I pretty much don't talk. Thanks for even inviting me. I forgot that this actually happened, and now it's starting to come to me as I'm sitting here. I'm like, wow, I actually sat in one of these rooms. I wasn't. I was just thinking about the game, and I'm sure you guys are just thinking about the game. Here come another guy. He's gonna come up here and talk. And uh, so I'm like, George, well, what do you want me to say? Because I don't, I don't do speeches. I when I talk to people, they're going somewhere. So, but before I even get to that, who's the captain? Who's, I mean, who's the um, for show? Who's the quarterback? Oh, congratulations, man. And, uh, I want to celebrate tomorrow. Just come to Naugata. I can't promise you you won't be <laughs> <laughs> um, that you're going to be chained up in some um, handcuffed in some uh, <laughs> But come on. Not just kidding. <laughs> Before I get into it, I, I remember just, just Derby Shelby. I mean, this is what you play for all year. You kind of wait for it all year, and once it gets here, it's like, oh my gosh, this is going to be the end. And, but it's not the end, and I want to tell you why. I remember playing my sophomore year. I didn't actually start, but um, I was like the backup running back. And um, I had to play. I don't know if you guys remember John Men. He played for Shell. Was it? You guys remember the running back? I can't remember. But I used to have to play him in practice against our seniors. And I ran all over my seniors because I wanted to play. That's all I wanted to do, but they didn't let me play. But I ran all over my seniors in practice. That year, we actually uh, we beat Shell 8 to, uh, eight to 0. And, um, John Easton, John Easton, John Easton. I couldn't remember. I know his name was John. I actually just saw him recently in Home Depot. It was weird. And uh, <laughs> I didn't play, but I, I like to think that I contributed. And then I remember my junior year, you know, I vaguely remember my junior year. And I remember it was a close game. It was in Derby. It was freezing. I was all bundled up. And we ended up winning that game by a field goal. And I ended up, that's the year I ended up winning the, the Silver Turkey. And then I, I remember my senior year, and it was a, it was a gutty year. We, I think we were six and four. It was it was a tough year. I think we had just as many as you have now. But we went out there and we played. We lost. I don't remember how much we lost by, whether it was a touchdown or two, but it was a great game. Um, I just want to tell you that because I know what it's like to sit here and to be the senior and to be a captain. But on game day, you're all captains. And um, and repeat after me. Both teams, cheerleaders as well. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I wanna hear you, I wanna win. I'm gonna win. I'm gonna win. I'm not talking about tomorrow, I'm talking about at the game of life. You guys achieved something, both cheerleaders and um, football players, that you don't realize how much this actually did for you and what, what it means to you in life. The leadership, the leadership skills that you have learned, you don't realize it until later on in life. For example, um, I started working at a couple, couple of the top childcare agencies in, the, in, in Connecticut. That wasn't good enough for me. I became the director of those agencies. Um, I, I became a police officer for the state. That wasn't good enough for me, so I transferred to Nogatuck. 
I'm working as a police officer as a, in Naugatuck. That wasn't good enough for me. I became a member of the SWAT team. I, I was always try, tr thriving to do better just because of what, I, what my past was here. You guys are all cut from the same cloth. I know you're probably you've got some passion and you're pride in your own team, but you're cut from the same cloth. I see players from teams that I played against over the years, and that once, how can I say it? You guys were passionate about winning <laughs> against each other. You kind of, I won't say hate, but you didn't necessarily like. I can see it in the room. And I, I can remember being here, and it's kind of weird watching you guys because later in life, that, that turns into respect a huge respect. And you may help each other down the line throughout your life. And I've had that, where I have players from Shum that I'm friends with right now. And um, frankly, when I hear, when I meet new people and they tell me they came from Shum, it doesn't mean nothing to me unless they play football. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not lying to you. And once you play football, now we can talk. Okay, now we have something in common. And um, I just want to say to you, you know, good luck tomorrow, but most importantly, good luck at life, because you will win. Because it, 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 this is where it began, okay? This is where it kind of grew me. You don't realize it, but you will win in life, okay? Because you have it in you. You made it this far, whether you're a senior, whether you're a captain, you're all going to be captains on game day. So, congratulations and good luck. <laughs>
uh, you know, embrace the moment. You're only a high school football player for X amount of more days. You know, enjoy, really enjoy playing with your friends, enjoy having fun. And, uh, you know, in honor of Thanksgiving, you know, everybody's had somebody here who's, uh, who's helped you get to this point, who's helped you get to becoming a senior in high school, a senior football player. They've supported you, you know, financially, emotionally, mentally. My advice is on Thanksgiving or sometime this week, thank them. Let them know you appreciate it. Let, you know, let them know you appreciate them. You know, I hope you have a good game on Thanksgiving. I hope it, uh, you know, I hope you stay injury free. And happy Thanksgiving to everybody and to the Shelton guys, Roll Gales. Yeah, maybe. Well, I would like to leave you players with some last minute advice. Uh, this game that you play tomorrow, and all the traditions that the former players have entrusted with you to carry on to the best of your ability. Win or lose, you have an obligation not only to yourself, but to your coaches, to every player who went before you, and for every young boy who was watching this game from the sidelines, to show us how much tradition means and how much that tradition is still alive by leaving everything you have on the field on Thursday. For many of you, this will be your last football game. Win or lose, if you can do your best, no one can ever take that away from you. Take away from this game in your high school career all the motivation you use to overcome adversity and if you do that, you gentlemen will be winners in life. I want to wish you all good luck on Thursday. Do your best. Try hard. Walk away with your heads held high, win or lose. And I would like to wish everybody a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. <laughs>